The BMW 3 Series has defined the sports sedan segment for so long, it almost seems like a foregone conclusion. Can the F30 hang on to the sports sedan crown? Or will one of these upstarts steal the keys to the kingdom? The steering has a great weight to it, which BMW has always done pretty well, and I do feel like I'm connected to the tires, but I don't feel as dialed into the chassis as I have in other 3 Series. Again, not that I don't like it. It's just that Cadillac and Lexus have brought the noise. You know, ever since the Cadillac ATS came onto the market, I've loved how this thing looks. I've really been hoping that it drives as good as it looks. And while the CTS was a surprisingly good BMW competitor, this ATS is directly targeted at the 3 Series. In every dimension, it's within an inch of the Beamer. The thing about the ATS is presence. The design is coherent, with the lines leading around the car from all angles. The result is classy and luxurious, and it makes the car look larger than the other two, even though it isn't. The high rear deck with sharp lines defining the taillights make the ATS one of the more nicely proportioned cars I've seen. Nothing droopy or sagging on this car, but just detailed enough to make it more sophisticated than American cars usually appear. These waterfall lights are polarizing. Not everybody's going to like them. But in a world where most everyone is trying to copy Audi's lighting style, this looks wonderfully unique. Inside, well, the Cadillac is brown. I'd much prefer black and no wood trim, but there are buyers out there that like this, I guess. The ATS quite possibly has the most reflective, shiny interior I've ever seen, which makes it impossible to keep smudges away. All the materials feel like higher quality than I expected. The interior door handles are quite simply beautiful sculpture. The Q system is much maligned at this point, and sadly it deserves it. The touchscreen overload with no real buttons that offer tactile information. It's just hard to use while driving. And at one point I just wanted to stop touching the thing because I couldn't make it respond. The seats are harder than I expected, and I still think GM's crash test dummies are entirely too fat. The back seat on the ATS is just tight the worst legroom and headroom of all three of these. So of all these cars, this one has the most horsepower. This V6 has been on a lot of GM product. It does provide a good amount of grunt here. You're not lacking for power, but it doesn't have the kind of insane thrust of the BMW, and it doesn't have the frenetic nature of the Lexus in full sport mode. And it's the only one of these three cars that only has a six-speed transmission. I can't believe only goes with six-speed transmission, but this is where we're at now. You used to think six gears was a lot. No longer. It doesn't take advantage of the power coming out of this car the transmission doesn't really know how to use it. It's sort of like you have to ring the engine room, you have to ring up the transmission department and make a special request that, okay, I want a gear change now. It can't compete with the Beamer on powertrain, transmission, and sheer grunt. It just can't keep up. I have to think that most people that are going to buy this car are probably going to buy it to go cruising on the freeway and commute back and forth to work. And if you're doing that, you're never going to realize how really precise and agile the ATS is. The harder I drive the ATS, the more I realize how much balance and performance is lurking in this chassis. It's that magnetic ride control. GM's engineers have done a brilliant thing. They have figured out how to make this car handle like it shouldn't. And it comes alive when you're in sport mode and traction control is off. You're going to surprise everybody who rides with you. Of these three cars, this Cadillac has so little body roll, it actually feels like it's in a different class of vehicles. The way it handles compressions over bumps, the way it stays planted mid-corner, the fact that it rotates right here in the dead center of the vehicle, right beside your hip. 
These are all things that keep the car from surprising you. You know exactly what it's going to do and you can make it do what you need. The ride quality through the corners, the handling is absolutely brilliant. It is so precise through the corners, but yet over boosted. It's too easy. And therefore it is the most accurate steering of these three cars. The Cadillac is the most accurate. It doesn't have the best feedback. The ATS is telling you enough information and the chassis is so balanced that you've got to really do it wrong to overcook yourself. Even though it's an electric steering rack and the ratio is not any different than the BMW, I can sense what the tires are doing in a way that the other two cars just don't communicate. Again, let me remind you, you're driving a Cadillac. This shouldn't be possible. I'm shocked to find that it feels like the BMW and the Cadillac switched personalities. This Cadillac does feel lighter and more precise than the BMW. That's practically its own ad campaign. I can't believe I just said that, but it's true. If you're going to own this car, I wish there was a way to have it in sport mode all the time. There shouldn't even be another mode. It should just be built this way. It's so good. Here's my problem with the car. This is almost, almost a one trick pony. It kind of feels like all of the things Cadillac used to do well, which was just focus on luxury and insulate you from the road. They've gone away from that so much. They've now made by far the most dynamic car, but the one that isn't as luxurious and isn't as shielding. So it's kind of a one or the other and I can't blame them. It's a tough battle. I love that Cadillac has really differentiated themselves and become a genuine competitor. In this case, I feel like it beats the BMW. Now the seats aren't great, the materials aren't fantastic, but the driving really is. different interpretations. And they're almost identical in footprint. It's yeah, they shocking are. how similar And they are. stats too. Yeah, absolutely. But they're completely different. 